Hello and welcome back to the Q&A. So today I just felt like doing a second video and it's going to be a Q&A because I've got a few questions sitting here that I want to get covered. Now, as always, if you've got any questions that you'd uh, like to ask, leave them down in the comments for this. Generally, things that kind of, um, you know, instigate broad discussion are, are the best questions, but hey, whatever you feel like doing. So first of all, I've got a question from the Codzilla player who asked them, what's my favorite race and why? That's actually a good question. I don't know if I've said this before, but the uh, the favorite race for me is the Draenei. Why? Because I think they just are really interesting. I love sci-fi stuff, personally. Um, I've, I've basically always had a, a bit of a love for space and all that stuff, so they are the only race that comes from space and has spaceships, which is pretty cool. I also think all their crystalline architecture and all that stuff just looks really awesome. And uh, their technology, again, is really cool. Then also, I think their lore is really, really interesting. And I like how they look sort of a little bit maybe demonic-ish. Of course, you know, the, the main Eridar are demons and the Draenei are just kind of the exiled ones who decided not to turn into total douchebags. But I just, I don't know, I like them. I think they look really cool from that perspective. Really, I suppose it's overall just a kind of look and feel slash um, lore thing that, that really makes me like them. In terms of the other races in World of Warcraft, well, I mean, well, for the Alliance ones, okay, because that's where my guild is, that's where I sort of started off. I am interested in playing Horde someday, don't worry. And actually, just a little side note, a lot of people say I'm biased against the Horde. Not true, I simply haven't played much of their stuff because I don't have the time to level up other Horde characters. I'd love to at some point in time. But in terms of the other Alliance races, I mean, Dwarves are kind of cool, but they're just sort of generic fantasy Dwarves. Night Elves, I mean, I get what they're they're about, it just doesn't appeal to me too much personally. I don't like gnomes. Sorry, gnome players. Um, humans are boring. I'm I'm a human male in real life, I don't want to play a human in, in game. It's just, ugh, boring, you know, not that interesting. Um, at least to me, anyway, of course, um, this is all just, you know, personal opinion stuff. And um, as for the Worgen, well, I mean, Worgen could be cool, but one of my biggest issues with the Worgen is their models just, like, everything clips everywhere, armor doesn't look good on them, and ugh, I just, I can't deal with that, actually, <laughs> from a technical level, and the whole thing about the hair coming out through the armor at the back just looks absurd to me. Not really a fan of that. And um, now, if you look at the Draenei, sure, they're probably not that original, but at least in comparison to everything else, they do feel quite original. I like their art, I like their story, their lore, and all that stuff, so... It just seems to me like the, the sort of clear alliance choice, really. Also, from that perspective of preferring the Draenei, it's been really cool playing through Warlords of Draenor and getting to see all this stuff properly. Um, it's, it's just been nice, and the whole thing with like the Exarch people and the Rangari people, and I, I just think it's all really interesting. It's, yeah, it's a really, really cool race, and hopefully they don't just drop their lore out completely. I mean, come on, we, we had to wait from the Burning Crusade until now to get any real Draenei lore. I'd be a bit worried that that would happen again in the future. I, I think it would be nice if they would just keep, or just, I don't know, have some way of keeping it so that race-based lore was kept into the game. I know that certainly a lot of undead and worgen players are really hungry to see the end of that story, so hopefully there's a way of getting that into the game at some point, though I suppose it does kind of seem a bit unlikely. Eh, hard one to uh, to discuss, but anyway, that's, that's my answer. I like the Draenei because I think they're cool. Next, let's move on to a question from Wilhelm Eberhardt, I think, um, who asks, Are gathering professions even worth having anymore, now that we've got a mine, a herb garden, and a barn? Should we replace our gathering professions with a crafting one, like jewel crafting or blacksmithing? That's actually a great question, and it's something that I've seen a lot of discussion about. First of all, it just it's a flat fact that herbalism and mining are not that useful anymore because anyone can get um, herbs and ore. Now, of course, you can't get that much, but if you've got loads of vaults, you'll probably be able to have enough um, ore and herbs to, to keep you going. And certainly, the auction house is being flooded with so many um, raw materials that, yeah, it, it's just it's not that special having one of those professions anymore. And I think that your relative power in comparison to any other player is not that great because whether you have herbalism or not, you can still pick some herbs. That's a bit of a pity. I, I see how it's worked out though. Um, I think what they really wanted to do with this expansion is try to make the crafting professions a little bit more cool and then simultaneously do a bit of a revamp with professions to make them a kind of more fresh, accessible thing that a lot more players would engage with. I think that certainly more players are engaging with professions now and that is nice to see, but 
I think the effect on the economy and the effect on people who spent that time leveling up mining and herbalism is definitely very unfortunate. I think that skinning is... Skinning, skinning, whatever. It, it's not it's not amazing, but at least the barn does require a bit more effort to get leathers from. So the relative power of a skinner in comparison to someone who just has a barn, I think is still okay. Really, if you're a miner or a herb person, though, you may as well swap over to a crafting profession like jewel crafting or blacksmithing or something because you're going to be getting plenty of, of ore and herbs anyway and at least you'll be able to make probably some more money or at least some cool items with those crafting professions. Also, Blizzard have made it so that you can create Draenor crafts even if you have one skill of a profession so your actual skill, you know, from 1 to 600 doesn't particularly matter. I think this is pretty much done to just say to everyone, hey, Crafting's a thing that's super accessible, that gives you pretty nice rewards, so go do that. And then simultaneously, they, you know, they made all this stuff accessible and then gave you ways to get those various resources on your character. So it was all about just creating more gameplay that every character could experience. It just seems like Blizzard's focus right now is for players to be doing crafting professions. So if you are on a gathering profession, ah, well, it might, it might be worth transferring over to a crafting one. Now, all of that said, right, with your small garrison plots, if you do have a gathering profession, at least you could enjoy the convenience of having a, um, a storehouse so you can get access to your bank. Currently, if you've got two crafting professions, you will also have a salvage yard on your barracks because the salvage, or on your garrison even, because the salvage yard is just so OP. So if you don't have to have two professions to match buildings with, it leaves space for a bit of extra convenience, which is certainly nice. Look, there, there's likely a larger discussion that I could have here about the WoW economy and how Warlords of Draenor has kind of messed around with it, but I'm just not experienced enough with the in-game economy to really say that much about it. So I'm going to move on to the next question, which is from Stannis Baratheon, who said, not really Stannis, of course, but he asked anyway, um, do you think that one day the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor could face a second revamp? Not necessarily another cataclysm, but maybe just one showing how the storylines of zones have progressed over the last few years. All right, a great question. Um, and yes, I do agree with you. The chance of, say, a cataclysm event happening again are very low because it was just so much work for Blizzard that I think really took away from the rest of the expansion. That's, you know, cataclysm was, was pretty lackluster. And if all of that dev time that went into making those new old zones had just went into making new stuff for max level players, then perhaps Cataclysm might have actually done better. Though certainly a lot of that vanilla content really did need to be redone because it was pretty pants when you when you think about it. Now that we've got that whole Cataclysm like giant revamp sort of thing shifted over to the side as being pretty much not, you know, impossible or not going to happen. We can talk about smaller revamps that could happen to some zones, or just little things that they could do. So first of all, the biggest thing I'd say that a lot of people want right now is for the um, conflict between the Worgen and the Undead to be resolved. And do you really want that to just be a part of leveling content? Do you know what my opinion is? No. Back in the day, we had this thing called Oper um, Operation Nomergon and whatever the hell the, the troll equivalent was. And uh, this was a series of short quests that happened during Wrath of the Lich King. It was a time-limited event that would let people experience some new gnome and troll story in which the Echo Isles and Nombregon were recaptured. Well, Nombregon was sort of recaptured. It wasn't really, though. Uh, your man Thermoplug was a bit of a dick and kind of outsmarted the lo whole lot of us. But that was really cool, and it tied off some story. Now, do I think that they should do another one of those things as a time-limited event? Maybe not so much, but... If we end up with another expansion that's set on Azeroth, maybe even just the Dark Below or a Cult Ras one, surely in a patch, doesn't have to be a big patch, but they could just, you know, do the, the conclusion to that story, make it a bit of a quest chain, and that way they could show us how the storylines of some of the key things have progressed over time. And they could just do that as a bit of new content for high-level players that wouldn't involve them revamping zones or anything like that. Though, just to go back to the specific wording of your question, I don't think they would do a Eastern Kingdoms or Kalimdor wide revamp that would update stories or anything like that. As I said, that would just take too much dev time, wouldn't be worth it, but certainly if they can find a few plot threads and just drop them in at some point in a patch or in something as a bit of fun content that people could do to tie up a story, then absolutely that's fun. 
Um, but no, I, I don't think there should be any more revamps. I don't think as, as well, actually, that um, Outland or, say, Northrend should be touched. I think they're... Okay, well, Outland's a bit shoddy. I think Northrend still holds up pretty well, actually. But, yeah, going over those and redoing them just doesn't make much sense because I'd rather have a bigger patch for my max level character because, really, that's what I care about when it comes to the, the mid-expansion content for World of Warcraft. Or even for a new expansion, if you think about it, it's at the stage now where so many people have got so many high-level characters that adding new leveling content or revamping, or not adding new, I mean revamping old leveling content for something that isn't max level just doesn't make much sense because so many people will never see it anyway because they've got as many level 90 or 100 or whatever characters as they really care about. Though finally, one suggestion that I do have is that they make it so that Outland will level you from 60 to 80, or so that um, Northrend would make you level from 60 to 80, and you could choose to do either one of them. There's enough quests there to last for um, 20 levels, assuming the leveling's decently accelerated, and that would mean that you could just get either the full Outland experience or the full Northrend experience, and you wouldn't be jumping from zone to zone to zone in a way that's not very satisfying. Anyway, that's basically it for that question, and that's also it for the Q&A. As I said earlier, if you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.